It's always the days you don't expect to catch fish that turn out to be one of the best days. With low water levels and the sun shining bright, we hiked to our stopping grounds, unknowing of what was to come. I got a coho on like the fourth cast. They take it gentle and then they don't do anything for a minute. Within a few casts, my dad hooked a bright silver coho salmon. Coho can be identified right away on the end of your line by the way they shake their heads and do a figure eight in an attempt to loosen the hook, usually followed by a wild jump. Whoa! My dad has been fishing this river system for over 30 plus years and has taught me all I need to know about the ways of the salmon people in this river. On this day in mid-October, it was the most coho he had ever seen stacked up so early, as prime time had usually been the end of October. I am using sort of a variation of the rolled muddler. When I started to tie these, it started out as rolled muddlers, and then I started out a bit of, they seem to like the um, apple green or chartreuse. Or, but if that doesn't work, sometimes I change color. Some days they like the real dull ones, and other times I put a bit of pink. And my original ones did have the deer hair, clipped deer hair head, which worked pretty well. So, But now I just got lazy to tie them. Next up, it was my turn to land a fish. Due to technical exposure errors, I was unable to get most of the fight recorded but I was super excited to land my first coho of the year in fresh water. Is it hatchery? Yeah. Hey, hey. So here we have it. I finally was able to catch my first coho of the year. Nice hatchery. Let's see if we can get some more. Dad got the first one, I got the second one. Let's see who gets the third one. Yeah, we have no wild ones so far. Yeah, no wild ones at all. There, we have about a school of a Last hundred or so to ourselves. I was here on Thursday and I caught two wild ones and then one hatchery. Yeah, it's a beautiful day. Absolutely gorgeous. Get some more fish. The seagulls eyed us as we made more casts, standing where they had been feeding on the rotting salmon. Even once the bright sun came out, the coho didn't seem to want to quit biting, even following our fly close to shore to aid in our excitement. It's daddy daughter day. Doesn't know he's hooked yet. There he goes, there he goes, there he goes. I think it's a hatchery. Oh yeah, it's a hatchery. Up on the bank you go. Yay. Thank you, coho people. Somebody once said a coho salmon is what a fish should look like. A salmon is what a fish should look like and a coho is what a salmon should look like. Yes, that's true. <laughs> this was the Thanksgiving weekend. My first coho I ever landed was a wild coho on this day 10 years ago. I thought about that first coho and how far I've come as an angler and the experiences I've had since that day. There he goes. How do you feel about that? <laughs> I'm so happy right now. Oh my God. It was only around 11 o'clock and we had five fish on shore. Spawning pink salmon 
would swim by us, holding on to their last breath before the end. Even with the rotting fish beneath our feet, our luck with clean coho just wouldn't end. Um, he chased it. He sort of like broke ranks out of the school and just came straight for it. And I saw him take it. That was so cool. Yeah, he took it right about that far out. Came, the whole bank is along the, the whole school is along the bank there. He just came shooting out into the shallows here and grabbed it. I thought that with the sunny weather, they would be a little shy. Actually, they still are a little shy. There's so many here, but not many of them are actually taken. Most of the ones we got, they sort of took it gently, right? Yeah. This guy Wham. torpedoed into it. He said, I want that thing. What a Thanksgiving uh, harvest. Oh, it's so cool. See, Canadian fly dad. One more. Out of hundreds of coho, I somehow managed to hook the only chum in the entire river. which I was happy when he unhooked himself, as I didn't feel like tiring out a spawned-out chum. Just with my luck, after that chum, I backcast it onto a log. Meanwhile, Dad was playing his fourth fish, which was also a hatchery, limiting out and ending his day. I fished a bit longer, hoping to get my third, which happened soon after. That's the coho splash. Yeah. Coho eight. Hatch. 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 Nice. That's my third one today. Third. You've got your limit. Yeah, so that's enough fish to carry home. It was near one o'clock, and I was worried my feeble arms wouldn't be able to carry three fish back. So I decided to end my day too, and being a good daughter, gut all seven fish. Simple incision. Go straight up. where the esophagus is, just cut that, and now you've got all the guts out. This one is male. Pull that. Hook that far in the water so no anglers, you know, come across any salmon guts. Nobody likes fishing at the river when there's a bunch of guts. They may wash downstream. Then here, along their backbone, is their kidney. Scrape it all out. You can use your knife or your hands. I just find it much quicker and easier with your hands. And there you go. You got a clean fish. That's a nice harvest. That is a great harvest. Say thank you, coho people. Thank you, coho people. One egg? No. Those who catch, kill, clean, and carry. It was a 40 minute hike back, but well worth it for both of us almost limiting out. With sore arms, we went home to process the fish and reminisce on the start of a great coho season. Feel free to like and subscribe, and any questions will be answered in the comments. This is Life of Linda Lee, and stay tuned for the next salmon video to see if I can outfish my dad.